Providing drinking water is a key ecosystem service. As populations grow, this service is becoming stressed. While the Earth's surface is mostly water, only a small portion, about 2.6%, is fresh water. And an even smaller proportion of the fresh water is surface water in lakes and rivers. This slide illustrates the hydrological cycle. The energy of the sun evaporates the water from the oceans, separating the fresh water from the salt and dissol that's dissolved in it. Precipitation returns it to the surface for use in the ecosystem. Most of our clean water comes from underground aquifers. While normally free of pollutants, groundwaters can be contaminated by a number of sources, such as abandoned mines, poorly constructed landfills and septic systems, household chemicals poured down the drain or onto the ground. The most common contamination of water is not the chemical industry, but human sewage. But that sewage has become more dangerous in the industrial age. Nitrogen has become a source of pollution over the last 50 years. Fertilizers enrich soil with ammonium nitrate because plants can use ammonia as a direct nitrogen source for their metabolism. Plants also excrete nitrogates that in addition to the unused nitrate in the fertilizer, runs off into groundwater. Nitrate easily uh, is converted to nitrite, which is carcinogenic. By adding industrial produced ammonia to the environment by using the Haber process, the nitrogen cycle on Earth is impacted. Chemists define a solution as a homogeneous mixture of uniform composition. Solutions are made up of solvents and solids. Solvents are substances capable of dissolving other substances and are usually present in the greatest amount. On the other hand, solutes are the substances dissolved in the solvent, and solids are usually present in the lesser amount. When water is a solid, you have an aqueous solution. Solutions have the following characteristics. Uniform particle distribution. They do not separate over time. They cannot be separated by filtration. Solutions are often transparent. Solutions can be separated into pure components. The separation is a physical change, not a chemical change. For most solvent-solute combinations, it is possible to make solutions of many different compositions. We describe solutions by their concentration, and we have already discussed parts per hundred, that is percent, and parts per million. Remember that one milliliter of water weighs one gram. So a liter is 1,000 grams or one kilogram. High levels of arsenic in drinking water can cause various diseases, including cancer. Another commonly used concentration unit is molarity. 
because chemists use moles in chemical equations, molarity is useful to measure components of chemical reactions. Note that the brackets indicate a concentration using the unit of molarity. Percent composition is also used by environmental chemists. It can be either volume per volume, weight per volume, or weight per weight. Which type of percent composition uh, used usually depends on the physical state of the reagents used. Before discussing weak intermolecular forces, let's remember that water has polar covalent bonds and a bent shape, making it a polar molecule. This will lead to the emergence of a key interaction between water molecules called the hydrogen bond. Some will argue that the hydrogen bond makes life as we know it possible. Hydrogen bonds are intermolecular bonds, while covalent bonds are intramolecular bonds. For most small molecules that can be a gas at standard temperature and pressure, the kinetic energy is too large for the uh, intermolecular forces to slow them down to form a liquid. London forces and most dipole-dipole interactions are usually too weak. However, the strongest dipole-dipole interaction, the hydrogen bond, binds water molecules together so that water is a liquid at standard temperature and pressure. London dispersion forces exist between all atoms and molecules. They are instantaneous dipoles existing for a very, very short time. They're the only forces of attraction between nonpolar molecules. This force increases as the mass does, and therefore the interaction also increases. Even though these forces are very weak, they contribute significantly to the attractive forces between large molecules such as hydrocarbons. Dipole-dipole interactions are attractive forces that are, on average, 10 times as strong as London dispersion forces. A hydrogen bond is an electrostatic attraction between an atom bearing a partial positive charge in one molecule and an atom bearing a partial negative charge in a neighboring molecule. The hydrogen atom must be bonded to either an oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine atom. Hydrogen bonds typically are only about 1 15th as strong as the covalent bonds that connect atoms together within the molecule. Hydrogen bonds are an average of 10 times stronger than the average dipole-dipole interaction. Think about how the hydrogen bonds of water affect specific heat. Specific heat is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance by one degree centigrade. The difference in energy absorption by the oceans in comparison to the adjacent land in part reflects the strength of hydrogen bonds. Without water, there would be no life on Earth. Should we protect it as, a, as good stewards?